Whose tongue is smarter, according to science? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. You ever wonder why PB and J taste so good, or why orange soda and anchovies definitely do not? Well, according to believers of the flavor pairing theory, it all comes down to delicious, indisputable science. The flavor pairing theory claims that the reason certain foods pair better together is because they actually share certain chemicals in common. And through this idea, science has introduced some pretty bizarre food combos that theoretically should be matches made in culinary heaven. Mm -hmm. But will our non-theoretical tongues actually agree? It's time for This Tastes Like Science. So the core concept of flavor pairing theory is that the more aromatic compounds two foods have in common, the better they're gonna taste together. And this is based on the fact that 80% of our food and drinks flavor is determined by how our noses pick up what's called volatile aromatic compounds, oh, such as dimethyl sulfide and cadaverine. Mm. <laughs> two of my favorites. And decorated chefs from around the world have started utilizing this mad science, but not everybody believes in this theory, so we are gonna test it ourselves. Yeah, we're gonna taste some odd combinations that science says should work alongside one another, and also some weird unscientific ones that Josh and Nicole have made up, and see if we can tell the difference. And whoever's got the most scientific tongue will win the coveted first place tongue ribbon. Ooh. Let's eat. Round one. Okay, we're starting off with coffee. According to the flavor pairing theory, one of these three ingredients is a scientific match while the others are not. Now, our options are bok choy, mustard, and carrots. Bok choy? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> is this that? Is this stuff that floats in uh, soup? Bok choy is like one of the most pound for pound nutritious things that you can eat on the planet. You ever had it with coffee? No. I'm not coming to any conclusions other than I think there's a reason why I haven't enjoyed those together before. Um, I'll tell you right now, bok choy ain't creamer. <laughs> Coffee and carrots, they start with the same letter. I love how you provided toothpicks for the carrots as if we couldn't grab them. You know, we're divas now, we don't like to actually touch the carrot. Ew. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I, to me there is a distinct pairing that brings both flavors more to life. I got my, 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 my chemistry, I'm seeing chemistry right now. You're gonna put your coffee mug behind the, the bowl you think is correct in mm -hmm. three, two, one. I think it's the mustard. mustard. Okay, you agree? And I actually kind of like it. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's weird, I'm, I'm tempted, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just stir it in. Because guys, this, this coffee is not even the anyway. right answer. You're both <laughs> it's not, incorrect. It's not right. No. We like it. Don't you fool, feel like fools now? Uh, then it's the carrots, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the carrots. Yeah, the carrots was my second choice. I will say that. Um, All right, so we both you, got it you wrong. You can share that. But now I'm curious. You need to take a sip of your coffees, and and does I, it ring true? I already did. It's horrible. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, the scientific explanation printed here on this card says that coffee and carrots match because they share four vinyl glycol and five methyl furfural. Oh, I love methyl furfural. Round two. All right, so we got some white chocolate. Yum. Plus uh, caviar, uh, seaweed salad. And what is this? That's unagi, also known as barbecued eel. Eel, yeah. Unagi. Mm -hmm. Man, I love some white chocolate. You ready to ruin it? <laughs> Forever? And then these white chocolates they gave us, they have a nice little crevice to put caviar, apparently. That is oh, it, you know gosh. what? That's not a bad idea. Yeah, you just, I'm gonna put it in there, cause, you know, it's a pairing. Um, that mm. wasn't good. <clears throat> um, Especially, it's so fishy. Mm, well, soft. because it's it's so sea -y. It, It's the potential of fish, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so you've made yourself a seaweed sandwich here. Uh, Similar thing going on. I mean, y'all being a little tricky here, giving us three things from the sea. Well, you did so well with the first round. Right, we gotta make it hard for them. I mean, the seaweed wasn't as pungent as the caviar, but it's the same experience. The part that's good is the white chocolate. Is that what we're deciding? I prefer the white chocolate. 
Okay. Right, but, but you gotta find the volatile aromatic, aromatic compounds. compounds. <laughs> um, I have an answer based on that. I do not want to taste any of them again. Uh -huh. So, mm. I'm okay. already. Three, two, one. I'm going for the caviar. I went with the eel. Even though it's a horrible experience, we've discovered that chocolate covers a world of hurt. But white chocolate isn't even chocolate. But maybe, oh, maybe it plays together. The correct answer is caviar. Uh, okay, but why? Rhett, you lost, you gotta say White why. chocolate and caviar match because they share multiple compounds, including trimethylamine, <laughs> which coincidentally also causes the odor of some human infections and bad breath. Round three. Okay, now we're trying to find the scientific pair to strawberries. Mm -hmm. We're choosing between mushrooms, eggs, and just straight up garlic. Oh, but first, quick announcement. Do you know what scientifically pairs with this episode? Josh and Nicole's new podcast, which is called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I invite you to check it out. Enrich your mind mush with the soothing sounds of the pair as they engage in oh. great food debates. Oh. And see their equally soothing faces on a video <laughs> version of the podcast. So you have such soothing that went faces. live yesterday. Which way would I point for yesterday? Uh, yesterday. This way. All right, so. Are you already eating a strawberry? Okay, a so. strawberry and a mushroom. Oh look, it looks like a it looks like a character. Hey, I'm a guy with sunglasses on. You're seeing something that I'm not. <laughs> Let me just be honest with you. Um Wow. I'm seeing it. That uh that told me nothing. Mushrooms are they they don't have a lot of flavor. Look now that's a weird world that I'm living in. That's a bedeviled egg right there. What if that what if that thing came out of a chicken, you know? Oh, you're already on the garlic? I'd take it to the state fair and win something. I got a strawberry yolk laying egg chi <laughs> chicken. Huh. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say that out of one of those, on that first taste, I got a strong association between two of the ingredients. You're obviously talking about the garlic because that's the only one that has a strong flavor. Everything else is kind of. I didn't say a strong flavor, I said a strong association. Get it out of my face, man. Three, two, one. I think it's the eggs. So see, the, you, the yeah. strawberry garlic thing was working for me. Did you like it? Yes. What, what about this? This? <laughs> and this. The correct this. answer is mushroom. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, we both got it wrong? <laughs> it's mush, why is it mushroom? Strawberries and mushrooms match because they share, oh, of course, I, I knew this, they share one nonanol <laughs> and methyl buta no AT. But listen, I think garlic shares two nonanols. <laughs> Round four. So we got some salmon here, some lychee, uh, oh, licorice, and then we've got hops. Why couldn't this be fun? I I just, I thought it was gonna be fun. I know, two rounds ago, after we were done, I turned to Morgan and I was like, does this get better? And he says, it gets different. <laughs> I, I I was, I've been looking forward to this episode. I know, I was, guys. I really discover things. You know, like, how about salmon and hops? <laughs> <laughs> it's science, man. Science goes places that humans aren't willing to go. You're right. And then humans finally show up and they're like, huh, you were right. Us doing this is like getting to the moon. I'm gonna make my mo my mouth into a moon shape. How are you gonna do this? <laughs> I'm not doing it. You can't. <laughs> what about that? You're talking about a crescent It's moon. a crescent moon. I was doing a full moon. Thank you for the toothpick for the licorice. Now if I don't like salmon or licorice. Maybe you'll like both of them together. Can you just eat hops? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nicole. Did y'all look into this? How's this normally work? Uh, I don't know, just do it. <laughs> Don't ask questions, just do it. I, I love the honesty. Mm. What in the world? I don't think you're supposed to do that. It's very bitter. I Talk guess. about aromatic. I got a guess based on that. Okay. okay, here we go. I had a good experience at one point. Three, two, one. With the lychee. I, this, it really, this really worked together. I, li I like lychee, but I thought that the hops and the salmon actually complemented one another. The hops. And also salmon, when they're trying to get upstream, they hop. 
the correct answer was licorice. <laughs> really? Man, I mean, science is on its own today. Okay, I will say, when I tasted those two, I, I was like, I kind of like this, but I thought it was just because I like licorice, and I just it's like they just threw that in there to throw me off. I gotta just get out of y'all's heads and get into my head. Get into science's head. Okay. Well, get into science's card and read it, please. Oh. Oh. Salmon. Salmon and licorice match because they both share the ex hexanal. The property hexanal, which is a six-sided anus. <laughs> Round five. I kind of just want to forfeit. Liver, man. Your nemesis. Also my nemesis. But is it great when you pair it with matcha powder? What is this? Uh, it's jasmine tea. Jasmine tea or cognac? Hey. Um, what? Science! <laughs> if you're listening, we hate you. If this is what it takes to get man back on the moon, I don't wanna go there. Listen, we went there, we put a flag. It's just a bunch of dust. There's no people there. Let me dust you. Don't, well, don't, don't, don't dust on my your... liver. Okay. Dink it? Why are we gonna suddenly dink it? <laughs> Why are you gonna do a last round dink? It'll make it better. <sighs> and sink it. It's the rhythm of it that helps me. That is bad in all kinds of ways. I mean, the matcha does help you. Matcha's strong. Matcha beats liver. It's stronger. Um, so but it that, does That's it does not what help. we're measuring. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna take another piece of liver. You're gonna pour tea over it? I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. There's that metallic taste. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, I, just, I regret, I, listen. Ah! I just feel like I've been hoodwinked. Of all the stuff we've eaten, it doesn't make liver more palatable. Uh, oh, this this should help. Yeah. Okay, so let me get, get a little bit of liver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We still doing this? Okay. What I thought was gonna happen is I thought we were gonna find all these cool combinations. Wow, and this what is amazing. Was, you should try this at home. What I was secretly hoping, I didn't tell anybody, is that I was gonna take these combinations and I was gonna have a party at my house. <laughs> and I was gonna invite the coolest people I know. And I was gonna be like, mm hmm, taste these two things together. And then I was gonna be so just, well liked. I, I, they're gonna be like, "Oh, you got, oh, you got to go to the McLaughlin's house. They just combine things, and it's crazy." I'm not having that party. You're all not invited to the party that I'm not having. Let's vote. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. I think it's the my. Oh, you. Why do you think it's a tea? Because that's that's the one thing that didn't help. Because there was a metallicy taste in there that I thought I was getting from the tea. Did one of us at least get one of these right in this whole exercise? You already got one right. I don't even remember. <laughs> the correct answer is jasmine. Yeah! All right, so you got this right. Finally. Li liver and jasmine match because they share multiple compounds including indole, which is defined as, quote, a crystalline organic compound with an unpleasant odor present in coal tar and in feces. Yeah. <laughs> Makes all kinds of sense. Hey, come over to my house. We're having feces tea. All right. Well, did I win? No, we tied. You got your oh. own. <laughs> I, you want me to? You want me to tongue you? No, I'll do my own. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Riley. And we're about to try Pennsylvania white tail deer testicle for the very first time. And, and it's, it's time, time to, to spin, spin the wheel, wheel of mythicality. Well, that was quite an awkward bonding moment. Uh, that was a full ball that they held up at first. I was gonna bite into it like yeah, an apple. Click the top link to watch us guess which candy bars were melted and then paired together in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the Will of Mythicality is gonna land. That said, if I went to a restaurant and they said the soup of the day is chili, I would feel just as misled if the soup of the day was a bowl of Frosted Flakes.
<laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> You're just lying to lie. No, that's okay. No, I don't agree with 